Hi there, welcome to Whiteboard Wednesday. My name is Mark Greenberg. I'm Product Marketing Group Director at Cadence, and today I'll be talking a little bit about autonomous driving and ADAS systems for vehicles. So what I have here on the board here, I'll give you a quick introduction to what an ADAS system looks like, an ADAS or autonomous driving uh, system looks like, and then I'll talk a little bit about why it's important. I'll share a little bit of a personal, uh, personal example with you. So if we look at a typical system that is uh, doing the, uh, the driver assistance or ADAS uh, function, we have, a, we have a couple of parts, and there's really two main parts. Let me start over here. Um, one part is the sensors. And so the sensors are connected to, um, to a sensor processor. The sensors are really picking up all the information around uh, what's happening in the world around the vehicle. It may be a camera, it may be light, uh, LIDAR, it may be radar, maybe some other form of uh, uh, sensor. These are typically connected over a MIPI interface to the sensor processor. Job of the sensor processor is to integrate this from one or multiple sensors and then uh, do some signal processing on it because there's a lot of data coming in from these sensors and we really want to reduce it to the data that is really most important to the operation of the vehicle. So there's some local processing that happens typically near the sensor um, that involves some DRAM, which is typically happening over DDR or LPDDR and uh, usually some flash that may be over the, the SPI interface, one of the flavors of SPI. So uh, the sensor processor processes uh, the, the input data from here, reduces the complexity, it'll highlight uh, important things that are happening in the image that the, uh, that the sensor sees, uh, vehicles, trees, cars, people, and uh, we'll transmit then the, the reduced data over, uh, typically over an automotive ethernet connection to the main uh, processor. Right, so let's look at this main processor. This main processor is sometimes called a, a supercomputer on wheels. This is going to be a very, very powerful processor. It's going to incorporate elements typically of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, um, uh, uh, CNN networks, things that will uh, allow all this data that's coming in to actually uh, turn into an action that the uh, that the car can take. And so there's a lot of things that go into this. Um, typically, there's a lot of uh, DRAM bandwidth that happens. Uh, systems today that are doing this are doing this with LPDDR4 memory technology. In the future, it may be future versions of LPDDR or GDDR6 or HBM on the DRAM interface. Uh, there's often a, either some storage or some flash, uh, the storage coming in via PCIe, the flash coming in over UFS, SD, EMMC, or ONFI. And that may be providing information to the system about uh, the condition that the vehicle is going into. For example, uh, giving some knowledge about what this road already looks like before uh, the vehicle entered it so that it can more easily identify what are all the obstacles uh, around, around the vehicle. Ultimately, this may turn into some display information, which is transmitted again over MIPI, and then output that may, uh, may control the steering or the brakes of the vehicle. And so the, the overall objective, of course, is to try to, uh, if, it's, if it's a fully autonomous vehicle, to be able to actually drive. Uh, if it's a ADAS system, to be able to provide additional safety in a situation that might otherwise uh, lead up to an accident. So I said I was going to give you a little bit of a, a personal instance. I'm, I'm a big booster uh, for these technologies in particular, and especially the ADAS, because it's available on many, many vehicles now. And uh, my personal experience, uh, we purchased a vehicle about a year ago. In January of this year, uh, my wife was involved in a, in a fairly serious accident that was significantly reduced by the presence of the, uh, of the ADAS in our vehicle. So let me, let me sort of just give you a, a courtroom explanation of, 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 of kind of what happened. You know, my, my wife was traveling on a 40 mile an hour road uh, at 40 miles an hour. And if you've ever looked at what a 40 mile an hour impact actually looks like, a 40 mile an hour impact is really severe. Like just the next thing you watch on YouTube after this, go look at a, go look at a 40 mile impact and, and look at what 40 miles an hour impact does. It's pretty serious. My wife was traveling 40 miles an hour. There was a car at the, at the side of the road, just at the, at the entrance to the road, um, who wanted to turn left, thought that this, the, the driver of that vehicle thought that they'd be able to make a, a left turn in front of my wife. Uh, what actually happened was they got about one car length out and, uh, and, and my wife struck them right in the door. Now, this typically would be a very serious accident. 40 miles an hour, the, the time that it takes for a vehicle to move this distance is typically a second, a second and a half. Uh, the NHTSA says that human reaction time in this type of incident is about one and a half seconds. So what would have happened uh, had it not been for ADAS 
would have been that, uh, that that my wife really would have collided into this other vehicle at, at 40 miles an hour. It would have been quite severe. And, and actually in the worst spot on the vehicle because she collided right with the uh, uh, driver's door. What actually happened was that, um, uh, we believe anyway, I mean, there's no data loggers that can tell us this, but the... Um, the incidence of the, the, the speed of the accident was actually significantly reduced. Uh, when the accident actually happened, um, although my wife had been traveling 40 miles an hour in the seconds pre preceding the, the accident, um, the actual accident had uh, no injuries for my wife, very minor injuries for the other driver. And why did that happen? And also the airbags didn't go off. And we know the airbags will typically go off between 14 and 28 miles an hour. So we know for sure that the um, uh, the the uh, speed of the actual collision was much less than 40 miles an hour. And so the ADAS would have been do, doing two things. The ADAS, first of all, can react to this situation of this vehicle pulling out and can do it much faster than a human driver. It can also get off the accelerator, get onto the brake uh, much sooner than a human driver. And then typically in this type of situation, if you've ever been in an emergency braking situation, unless you're a race trained driver, you're probably not going to jam on the brakes super hard uh, when you when you first do it, you're probably going to you know test the brakes. You'll get halfway down, three quarters of the way down, but you're not going to be 100% on the brakes until after a second or two anyway. The ADAS system on the other side, on the other hand, recognizing an emergency situation, will get 100% on the brakes right away. And so these two factors, um, the fact that the, the the vehicle was able to identify that there was a vehicle about to cross the path and then also that it was uh, able to do it in much less time and be able to apply the brakes harder, reduced the speed of impact uh, to something less, we, we, we assume less than 28 miles an hour and uh, to a speed below where the airbags deployed, my wife not injured, um, the other driver injured with a uh, hospitalized for a hurt foot, other passengers in the car not injured. So we're very thankful to have this technology. Um, this is what it does. This is what it works. This is how it works. And uh, you know, we hope that when you buy a vehicle, you'll select uh, uh, ADAS technology in your vehicle, the, the collision avoidance. And um, uh, we hope to continue to uh, provide technology for people to build more of these. So that's our Whiteboard Wednesday and uh, hope you'll tune in again.